All right, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful Wednesday, uh, October 25th, 2023. It's about 11.08 a.m. here, California time, a few days away from Halloween. Goodness, starting to look like winter time out there in Wyoming. That's a live image here from the uh, National Park Service of Yellowstone with uh, oh, Old Faithful there, I believe, in the background. Looks like it's uh, not in the uh, eruptive stage yet, but we do have quite a few uh, snow flurries out there flying through the air. Starting to look like a little little winter time out there. Also, some of these uh, other images here of the north entrance showing uh, what looks like some snow-covered roads out there in mountains. Beautiful. That is due to a, a massive cold front coming down, bringing with it some uh, very cold air out of Canada. We'll get to the weather here in just a little bit. Uh, latest earthquake activity does show a 3.5 here off the coast of Tokyo, Japan. And uh, that's the latest earthquake there in the green flag. Also, some movement there in Puerto Rico. All right, checking out the latest information here on the USGS site as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, seeing a little bit of movement overnight, uh, not a whole lot. In fact, looking at the last 24 hours of largest magnitudes here, it's going to be that 5.2 down here into the South Sandwich Islands region, about 62 kilometers deep here. A little bit of movement stirring up here today. Also, uh, typical zones, including the Indonesia Islands area. Some deeper quakes here triggering uh, some movement here at 141 kilometers for this 5.2 uh, 5 in the area turn off my phone uh, but for the most part really haven't seen any large-scale uptake a little bit of movement filling in back here across Solomon Islands in the Fiji Tonga region this area was pretty quiet here oh, over the past two days but it looks like some deeper movement quakes returning along with uh, well you can see it some surface adjustment going on and it's very typical here we get deeper activity across this region and if there's enough strain we'll see uh, as far as strain goes if there's enough strain upstream here uh, along the plate boundary then we'll see some earthquake activity up here but if not the momentum tends to shift here across this area and that's where we've seen a, uh, a more shallower earthquake following these deeper movement quakes back here it always follows that plate boundary line a prime example here today and uh, yeah, so continuing to watch this area. Not seeing too much down into the New Zealand area for now. Um, but again, we'll continue to watch that area as well. Let me check the uh, GeoNet servers here real quick. And see what we got uh, for the latest information from GeoNet. <clears throat> Goodness, it's, it's a little chilly out here in Northern California right now. At least for our standards, uh, 55 degrees. We're not supposed to warm up much today. Getting uh, getting some cold air coming down. No snow, at least where I'm at. But All right, an hour ago, 2.4. Looks like uh, some movement there from yesterday as well. Let's give a quick glance at the earthquake drums. This will give us a good indicator of any uh, earthquake activity around the New Zealand area. There's that little uh, smaller earthquake there around the Quartz Range area, South Island. Uh, but aside from that, things look generally quiet across the New Zealand area today. But as always, they do sit along that major plate boundary, and there's been quite a bit of adjustment all over the place with a very minimal adjustment there in New Zealand. The Big Island of Hawaii, latest earthquake shows a 2.8, 2.9 kilometers deep here. Uh, been kind of quiet here in terms of earthquake swarming, so let's go ahead and double check that and see what we got from the Volcano Hazard site, which still shows Kilauea Volcano as a yellow status. Tilt meter was going down here over the past couple days. It looks like that remains in effect as far as deflation goes. Uh, this is the past two days of inflation data at the summit of Kilauea Volcano, indicating a uh, decline in magma influx as far as intrusion goes into the area up below. Although overall, uh, we're still somewhat elevated, but we're going to continue to watch that. Notice this pattern here of uptick uh, and deflation followed by uptick. We should see this um, peak back up on the chart. If not, then I uh, I think that we're looking at more of a, a quiet situation. If that were to follow uh, a continued deflation line, 
Then uh, we'll go back into uh, probably some quiet times there across Kilauea Volcano. But uh, we'll continue to watch that and report back on it. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes there, like I said, there's not a whole lot showing up on the USGS map. Uh, let me bring up the seismograph station here. Any one will do because pretty much all of these seismograph stations are cluttered all over the place. There's a few earthquakes here showing up on the map. Some of these may be from Pahala as well, which sits down to the southwest of the uh, summit area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, but either way, yeah, it looks like a handful. No major swarm going on though. Uh, a lot down here across the Pahala area, but this is very typical. It's been an ongoing swarm here, and it's been studied since the uh, late 60s or so. Just uh, a lot of earthquake activity occurring here throughout the years, down there around 30 kilometers deep or so. We'll cover that on another video. I've covered it quite a few times there, but uh, we'll, we'll cover that in detail a little bit later. We are watching a little line of activity. Notice this line kind of stretching up this way. This may have something to do with uh, potentially reactivating areas here south of the crater area as far as influx of magma goes. We'll have to watch this. This is fairly new earthquake activity uh, in the last couple hours or so down there around 30 kilometers deep with a, a little bit of adjustment uh, towards the surface levels. Uh, so we'll watch this, see if that inflation returns higher throughout the day today. But for now, uh, everything is as is. West Coast activity, a little bit of activity uh, stirring up off the San Andreas Fault near Fontana, 2.2. Nothing major going on there in Southern California for now. Handful of smaller microquakes, it looks like, and uh, that's the story across the general West Coast. Uh, a little bit of movement across Mount St. Helens from yesterday. Uh, actually, these are from today, it looks like. A little couple point ones. We did see a couple yesterday as well. No major movement to take note of, though, across the area of the West Coast and out in Texas area. And uh, Oklahoma, for the most part, things are just generally quiet. A handful of smaller microquakes in the area. Uh, into the Alaska region here, not a whole lot going on. we got typical movement across the area with a handful of uh, magnitudes above 2.5, but nothing above the 3.0 threshold. So just kind of watching this day, seeing how it unfolds. There's not a whole lot of major movement going on currently uh, out here across the globe. One earthquake here yesterday in the Kuro Kamachaka, kind of watching that. Uh, let's see what we got for areas across the um, Middle East. And um, Mediterranean area looks like some movement last night stirring up out there, including a 4.5. Let's see where that's at. I don't think it's going to be this one here. This is a four pointer from yesterday near Cyprus, but we do see a little bit of activity stirring up here further west uh, along the Mediterranean area from the EMSC globe. Um, earthquake activity up in the Iceland area continues. A handful of earthquakes showing up there for sure. Um, along the plate boundary. Now, I'm not 100% certain if this is going to be related to any volcanic activity, but uh, we are getting a little bit of movement here. It looks like um, 4.6 did strike uh, about 1 o'clock this morning or so in this area. Most of these earthquakes are scattered about uh, the area, not in any one specific location, which would be volcanic, right? If we're looking at that. Uh, if that were to take place, but it looks like there's just a mixed bag of earthquake activity uh, scattered out across the entire area. But we'll continue to watch that as well. It's been a this has been kind of a heightened area in the past 24 hours. We'll continue to watch the Puerto Rico area, handful of earthquakes here as well, including a 2.3 and a 2.6 in the last hour. Nothing major going on here today yet, folks. But we'll continue to watch that. The live seismograph stations are all fairly calm and stable. No signs here of any large earthquakes anywhere. And uh, I'm really not seeing any major swarms going on. Yellowstone up here, see these little spikes? Now with the snow coming in here, right? Got a lot of smoke, snow flying in. Uh, look at the live view again here at uh, the area of Yellowstone. Well, it looks like, looks like that uh, adjustment on the focus here well, it needs to be adjusted here for the focus of this camera. 
because it looks like it's spotted on some uh, some raindrops or some melted snow there on the uh, lens of the camera. But we did see some snow flurries out there flying, and you can see on the uh, entrances of uh, the parks here that there's quite a bit of snow out there. Now that could have an effect on the Yellowstone um, seismograph stations. A lot of times they will show up as uh, some type of outside interference. Really not seeing it, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, when the wind picks up, it really does show the uh, outside interference here on the uh, seismograph station. So don't mistake that for any volcanic activity. But we'll cover that if that does pop up. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Space weather activity. Well, a couple sea flares overnight, but these are very low-grade sea flares. <clears throat> Uh, but it's getting a little bit, maybe a little bit more active than it has been in the past couple days. Notice these uh, flares popping up here, but nothing significant. Uh, those are coming off of a couple sunspot regions on the far eastern limb of the sun, I believe. Uh, it is looking a little bright over here. We do have some darker uh, features on the sun. Those are coronal holes that are currently, you know, let's see how close they are to facing us. When was this? 18... I guess it's getting a little bit closer. Eighteen oh seven UTC time is that right? I guess it is. Just taking his time, uh, but over the coming days here, we should see these directly facing the Earth, and uh, should see uh, maybe some high-speed solar wind flowing from these coronal holes in the Earth direction, which could amplify uh, some of these conditions here over the next few days, but. Not until that happens. we got a few more days before we see any adjustment up here on the three-day. But for now, things are pretty calm across the auroras. Or as far as the auroras go, across the polar regions. Um, Kevin's mentioning here, it is possible that once the stream arrives, a geomagnetic disturbance possibly reaching G1 storm levels will be observed. But again, we have to... That'd be kind of cool right around Halloween time. Uh, but we'll have to watch this and see. Um, once it is facing us, we'll get a little bit better view of... The arrival times of that high-speed solar wind. Uh, looking at the current solar flare thread out here, again there's not a whole lot going on here with the uh, sunspots. There's a couple, but everything looks fairly stable. Even these newer regions that were coming around the eastern limb have uh, dissipated. That's a little odd. Uh, something's going on here. It could have something to do definitely with the uh, magnetic structure that uh, the sun's experiencing, the re reversal. That does play a major part in the flare activity, a lot actually. Uh, so we'll just continue to watch this, see if anything pops back up. Because we are supposed to be headed towards solar maximum, right? Solar cycle 25 progression chart. Waiting for this to update. We should show a dramatic drop here on the chart once... That uh, once it is updated, uh, for right now it still shows that we're uh, above the uh, forecasted line. Just want to double check here. I got something weird going on on my side, but it looks like we're live. Everything looks all right. Uh, let's see here. All right, uh, weather outlook here. We got a uh, pretty nice low pressure system coming in uh, into the Oregon area. Let me double check this, make sure this is the most recent imagery here i think it is looks like it all right uh snow and rain up in oregon and washington a lot of snow coming down here from the north into montana getting a good taste of winter uh that's going to head out of here but it is going to bring with it some much colder temperatures here for a good portion of the country here is today's time stamp again we're only supposed to hit 62 degrees for our afternoon high it is cloudy and 55 right now and uh, it's, a, it's a little chilly. We're definitely below our average temperatures out here for this time of year in Northern California. So that's going to be the remainder of the week that we're going to be experiencing these uh, below average temperatures as we head towards the weekend as well, it looks like. Uh, high pressure building back in here way up in the Gulf of Alaska. That could have an influence there on the West Coast for Halloween, which is good. Looks like uh, maybe a little bit above average temperatures, but we'll continue to watch that. Um, low pressure building out in the eastern portion of the country as we head towards the end of October. 
uh, Halloween and the first week or so of November looks chilly out there. We'll continue to watch that and see um, how everything plays out uh, as far as precipitation and moisture goes. Total accumulated precipitation. Not a whole lot here in Northern California. Looks like we just got uh, some light showers coming in from these storm systems. Uh, but a whole bunch of rain it looks like out there in Oklahoma and Texas and Kansas. Goodness. Uh, so we do have some moisture coming in there. Um, Long-term models at least until November 10th or so. Looks like we will see some uh, pretty strong systems hit up into the Pacific Northwest. Right now, limited impact in the Northern California, but it looks like a little bit of accumulation. As long as we get a little bit, uh, that's good. But eventually, as we head into uh, deeper into the rainy season, we should see things amplify out here across Southern California and the West Coast in general due to the El Nino pattern that is in full effect and the potential of it being quite a strong one. So we'll continue to watch that. All right, folks, uh, I think that's it for right now. Um, just stay safe out there, and uh, we will be back if anything major changes. I did accidentally pull the plug here on the live stream. Didn't mean to. I was messing around with a couple settings here <clears throat> on my display, and uh, for whatever reason, it pulled the uh, it pulled the plug on the uh, live stream. But uh, either way, we're back, and uh, we'll continue to move on. Hope everyone has a good day, and we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Take care, folks. Stay safe.